Good morning, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are consider, uh, continuing our journey through the season of Pentecost, and Pentecost is a time when we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit in and through God's people. And you're going to hear a little of that in, in worship this morning. And it's my prayer that you will encounter God's presence during this time of worship, wherever you are, and that you will more fully see yourself the way that God does. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we gather once again to offer you praise and thanksgiving for your unfailing love and faithfulness shown most clearly through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to recognize your presence and to help us to truly see ourselves as you see us. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And I would like to invite you uh, to join us in the hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Acknowledging our shared life together, the flowers are given to the glory of God and in memory of Ruth McCarty. The rose honors Anne Langford, child of Ryan and Kate Verisco, born July 22nd. The votive is in memory of Marshall Townsend. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, life seems to get unmanageable at times. We love the smooth times when all is well, but Lord, we have serious problems with wind and waves, and we have plenty of those lately. We want you to fill our sails with a lovely breeze to push our boats across the glassy sea. But you know that life isn't glassy seas and gentle breezes. Sometimes things get rough. Help us place our trust in you during all these rough times. You call us to reach out and to take our focus off our own panic and place our trust in your love. 
Then you ask us to reach out to others with the same kind of love and compassion that you have given to us. Today we have come to you with burdens and cares. Our seas are not calm, but you offer to us a lifeline. Humans are suffering because of the pandemic. People have died, have lost their jobs, and are being evicted from their homes. Be with us and them. Give us courage and hope. Strengthen us to truly be your disciples. Fill us with your goodness and remind of the, us of those who are suffering so much. Let us not lose our faith in you during these trying times. For we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now children, gather around whatever device you're watching today on and join Ms. Serena for the children's sermon. for joining us today. It's an exciting Sunday because it's Jump Start Sunday. Today marks a day where we really jump back into our faith journey. We connect with our new groups. Some of us are old groups. We have a lot of groups to offer that'll help you continue to grow in your faith journey. It's also an exciting Sunday. If you're here in town from 11 to 1, you can come to our parking lot here at First United Methodist Church for meet and treat. It's a great chance for people of all ages to meet your small group leaders and get a treat. Okay, and it's also a really exciting time of year because it's back to school time. No matter what that looks like for you, whether you're in school every single day, or maybe you're going a couple of days at school and a couple of days at home, or maybe you're fully virtual, no matter what this looks like for you, it's a really exciting time of year because we get to go back to learning and growing and meeting new friends and new teachers. Okay, there's nothing more exciting than back to school, than back to school supplies. So I brought some with you, with me, to show you. Okay, I brought my pencils. I like extra sharp pointy pencils. I've got my laptop. A lot of us will be learning virtually, so you're gonna need your laptop. What else have I got in here? I've got my glue, and I've got my mask. So what did you notice about all my supplies? They might have my name on them. I marked them. And this way, no matter where I go or if I leave my stuff, if people find them, they'll know that they belong to me. Well, friends, did you know that you too are marked and belong to someone? You are marked and belong to God. And you are so special and loved by him. And he wants you to know that you are his no matter where you go. So no matter what school looks like for you, we are all marked and loved by God. It says so in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, it says, He put the Spirit in our heart and marked us as his own. And because God loves us so much, he marked us with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is like a super duper helper. So as we go back to school, the Holy Spirit can help us with things like knowledge so that we can learn lots of cool and neat things. The Holy Spirit also gives us courage. I know this year is different than any other year that we've experienced. So we'll definitely need courage going back, whether we're learning virtually or in person, we've gotta be brave. And the Holy Spirit helps us give, gives us kindness so that we can be kind to our new teachers, we can make new friends, and we can be kind to our parents who are helping us virtually too. 
So no matter what your school year looks like, just know that you are so loved by God, you belong to God, and that he gives us the Holy Spirit that will help us learn and grow this school year. Okay, I have one more thing inside this backpack. It's a special blessing from Reverend Brady. This is something we want to offer to bless your year and help you know moving forward that this year is going to be incredible and blessed. So here's what we need you to do. If you are anybody connected to school, no matter what your age is, if you're a teacher or a student or an administrator, maybe you help prepare lunches or drive buses, we want you to gather close for a special, special blessing and grab those things that you need, whether it's your backpack, your laptop, or maybe your glue and scissors. Gather those things so that we can offer them a special blessing this year. And don't forget as you go back to school to love cubed. Love God, love self, and love others. Thank you, Ms. Serena. So one of the things I want to invite you to do is, uh, we do this sometimes when we gather together, is if you want to extend a blessing to someone else, will you just extend your hand towards whatever screen you're watching? And, uh, and if you're a, a, a student who's going back to school, if you're a teacher or somebody else who is, who is in any way uh, going to be associated with school, uh, maybe, you know, hold hands with one another in your household or lay hands on the students around you uh, and, and let's seek God's blessing together. Let us pray. Lord, it's back to school time, and uh, this year in particular is full of, of worry and maybe indecision and many unknowns. We all want what's best, uh, but it's hard to know right now what's best. And so help us all to make the wisest and most compassionate decisions that we can. Lord, for all those who are, are returning to in-person school, uh, we ask for your wisdom and for your protection Lord, help us to take our own health and other people's health seriously, but also not to be filled with fear. Lord, for those who are doing school virtually, uh, we ask that you help them to stay focused and, and to make friends, uh, even, even across the, the screens and the connections. Lord, help us to be grateful for the opportunities we do have and to use them well. And Lord, we also realize there are those in our community who have limited resources or maybe who aren't sure what's happening with school. And we ask that you give them your peace and your patience and help us as a whole community to be aware of those who face these challenges and to work to overcome these challenges for good. Lord, for everyone, for teachers, for parents, for students, for bus drivers, for administrators, for cafeteria workers, for staff, everyone, uh, we ask your patience, your courage, your gentleness. Lord, help us to be kind towards others, to be kind towards ourselves. And Lord, we do ask a blessing on pencils and on glue and on backpacks and on Chromebooks and on masks and all of the things that we use uh, to educate us. Lord, uh, touch them with your spirit and, uh, and, and help them to be tools that help us to learn and to love you. Lord, help us not just to survive in these times, but to thrive. And help us also to look forward to a time when living through COVID will be a, a crazy story that we all get to tell one day. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us and that blessing, everyone. And now I uh, want to continue to encourage you uh, to share the love and the peace of Christ with one another uh, by passing the peace of Christ. And again, it might be with people right there in your own household, or maybe it's extending that greeting of peace and love via text message or on social media, however you want to do that. Peace be with you. So I want to continue to invite you to uh, interact with us in a variety of ways. And the uh, first thing I want to say is we're really glad that you're here worshiping with us. And if you're joining us for the very first time, we're glad you found us. And uh, I pray that you'll be blessed by uh, your time in, in worship. So uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, we, we collected, uh, did a collection for back-to-school supplies over the last couple of weeks. And as a congregation, we raised uh, over $6,500. And those will go to provide some supplies, some uniforms, and uh, other, uh, other cleaning supplies and things like that for our two partner schools, Bernard Terrace Elementary and Magnolia Woods. And if you still want to be a part of that offering, it's never too late. Uh, you can give by just, uh, you can either go to our church's website, uh, you can text a gift, and I'm going to tell you a text option this morning. Uh, it's 225-465-0770. 
uh, and you'll see that on your screen. And also, you can always mail a check. But if you want to give a gift to that uh, tools for school uh, offering, just put tools in the memo. And also want to always continue to encourage you to, to remember uh, uh, First United Methodist Church in your acts of generosity, and you can give to the church and our ministries all the, all the ways that I just mentioned. So Ms. Serena mentioned that today is a Jump Start Sunday, and we're really ex- excited to celebrate the graduation of our students to the next Sunday, uh, next grade in Sunday school. But also want to remind all of our adults out there that we also have many adult studies starting. I'm going to be leading a disciple Bible study on Tuesday nights. There are other groups and classes, and I want to encourage you to consider being a part of a group, and you can go to our church's website to find more information about that. Will you pray with me as together we bless our offering? Let's pray. Lord, you call us to let go of the things we cling to and to step out in faith, trusting in your love and provision. And so we offer these gifts and we offer our very lives. Use them to accomplish more than we could possibly imagine so that through us, your kingdom might come and your will might be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please please join me in the prayer for illumination. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to a mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear, But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. 
Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith, why do you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what stands out to you when you hear this water-walking story about Jesus and his disciples? Uh, In most of the Bibles that I looked in, this story is found under the heading, Jesus Walks on the Water. And that's certainly something that we could focus on in this story. It's It's an amazing thing, right? And in that case, this becomes a miracle story that underlines the divinity of Christ for us, like like the other miracle stories. Uh, What else? What else stands out? If you do a Google search for pictures of this story, and I encourage you to do that sometimes when you're reading the Bible. Look at some of the art, look at some of the images that people have have come up with. But but if you look for uh, pictures of this story, what you'll find is many pictures of Peter sinking into the water or Jesus with his hand outstretched with Peter kind of stumbling. Uh, And that is something else we could focus on. Uh, Then this becomes a story about us needing to have faith, about keeping our eyes on Jesus and not giving in to our fears. And that's that's a great, great message too. But I got to tell you that I don't think either of those things are what are most important in this story. Let me explain. So by the time we get to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, we've seen Jesus do all kinds of miraculous things. Let me name just a few for you. So in Matthew 8 and 9, just in those two chapters, Jesus cures a leper, heals a centurion's servant, casts out demons, calms a storm, heals a paralytic, heals a woman who is hemorrhaging, raises a little girl from the dead, heals two blind men, heals a person who was a mute. That's just in chapters 8 and 9. In verse 12, he heals a man with a withered hand. And then in, verse four, in chapter 14, uh, which is just, just, just right before this story, he feeds the 5,000. Uh, that's the crowd that he's dismissing in the very beginning of this reading. So, so here's the thing. By the time we get to Matthew 14, if we haven't figured out that Jesus is an amazing and miraculous person, we haven't been paying attention. And so uh, finding out that he can walk on water is yeah, a pretty amazing thing. Uh, it's just not what I think is the most amazing thing in this story. Uh, I guess there's, there's also nothing surprising to me about uh, Peter uh, sinking in the water. I mean, what do you expect to happen when a person tries to step out on the water and sort of walk? What would happen if you did? You would, you would sink, right? So again, there's, there's nothing surprising there. Uh, but do you know what is surprising and what is amazing in this story? It, it happens right there in verse 29. This is what it says. So Peter got out of the boat. He started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. Peter, uh, the son of John, the brother of Andrew, the fisherman from Bethsaida, got out of the boat. I don't care if it was three steps, I don't care if it was seven steps, 12 steps, whatever it was, he started walking on the water towards Jesus. And so to me, if there's anything in this story that deserves a headline, it's that. Peter walks on the water. I really think that's what we should focus on here. Now there are all kinds of things I want to know about Peter's walking on water. I mean, I just want to know what was going through his head, what was going through his heart. But the question I want to ask us to think about a little bit is, what made Peter think that he could do such a thing? I mean, where where did he get this idea? If we look back over Jesus' ministry, uh, we'll see that it was marked by certain things. There were just certain certain, uh, characteristics of Jesus' ministry. Uh, One of them was he went from place to place proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom. We see Jesus do that over and over. And as he went, we're told that he healed the sick, he cleansed the lepers, he raised the dead, and he cast out demons. I mean, this this is the description of Jesus' ministry and who Jesus was. But what's interesting to me is that when Jesus sent out his disciples, he told them to go out and do the exact same things. And so this is from Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. As you go, he told them, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. 
See, when Jesus sent out his disciples, he told them, go out and do exactly what I've been doing. Be just like me. And here's the thing, they did. They did do that. If you read through the New Testament, you'll see it's not full of just stories of Jesus doing amazing and miraculous things for God's kingdom. It's full of Jesus' disciples doing amazing and miraculous things for God's kingdom. Uh, so there's another small detail about this walking on water story that I, that I think we should notice. Uh, it's how Jesus responds to Peter, uh, and we find this in verse 28. So Peter sees Jesus walking on the water. Uh, Jesus says, hey, it's me, don't be afraid. And, and Peter responds with this. He says, okay, Jesus, if it's you, command me to come out on the water. And, and Jesus says, come. It's the very next thing. So it says this, if it's you, command me to come out on the water. And then there's three words after that. He said, come. And what's amazing to me about that is Jesus doesn't skip a beat. Uh, Jesus doesn't think about it for a minute. Jesus doesn't take time and say a prayer. Lord God, please give Peter the strength or give Peter what Peter needs. Give him faith. Without a moment's hesitation, Jesus says to Peter, come on, come on. Uh, Jesus had no doubt that Peter could do it. Uh, I almost think that Jesus believed in Peter probably before Peter did, right? If it's you, Lord, then tell me to come out there. Come on, Peter, come on. I believe in you. You can do it. Let's go. What made Peter climb over the edge of the boat and walk out in that water? What made him think he could do it? Uh, I think we often think about it as being uh, Peter's faith in Jesus. Uh, but was it, wasn't it also Jesus' faith in Peter? So where am I going with all this? Where am I going? See, I think that Christians tend to look at Jesus as this amazing and miraculous figure who came to shine God's love and light into the world. And Jesus was all of those things, no doubt about it, right? Uh, but what we often miss is that when Jesus looks at us, he sees the same thing. You are in an amazing and miraculous person who is in the world to shine God's love and light. And if there's ever a time that our world needs a little love and light, it's now, right? Now listen, I've got all kinds of questions about the miracles in the Bible. Uh, I've stood with families whose loved one was dying uh, and I've prayed for their healing and it didn't happen. Uh, I wish I could feed the hungry of the world with a prayer. I do. Uh, walking on water would be a really cool thing if it would glorify God. <laughs> that, that'd be neat, right? Uh, I believe in miracles, and I believe miracles happen. But I've never experienced any of these things. Uh, but I'll tell you what I have experienced. I've experienced people who are seeking to live like Christ, to be like Jesus, and to bless others and to share God's love and light in a thousand other ways. Uh, I've experienced and known people like Josh Seltzer, uh, who despite all the restrictions related to COVID-19 and the dangers, uh, every Saturday gathers uh, under the bridge on Convention Street and feeds people who need food in our community. More than 100 every Saturday, Josh feeds them. Uh, his organization is known as Famine is the Enemy or Fight. Uh, I've seen uh, this love and light of God through people like Ruth Summers and Martha Kilborn and Bonnie Wolf and Sarah Lemons and Barbara Dodge and Tammy Humes and Inger Parvizian who've knitted all during COVID, sitting at home, knitting beautiful baptismal blankets for uh, the, the children that we baptize in our church. Uh, and I don't know, this takes a whole lot of work. It would take me a long time to <laughs> knit one of these things. And I can't tell you the, the beautiful smiles that come across people's faces when we give them these gifts during baptisms. And just the wonderful reminder they are about God's love and, and grace. Uh, I've seen that love and light at work through people like Margaret Tyler and her family and Mary uh, Kay Carlton and the Spirited Stitchers who have now made nearly 25,000 cloth masks that have been uh, distributed all over our nation. Uh, and people like Andrew Sellers, who I have dubbed the Spirited Gopher, 
uh, who's made endless trips to the Tyler's home, uh, picking up kits of mask material, delivering them all over Baton Rouge to the stitchers, picking up the completed masks, bringing them back to the Tyler's home over and over and over again, and I'm told always with a smile, always with a smile. Now look, none of these are miraculous in the supernatural sense of the word, uh, but they are people using the power they have, the power they do have, to make the world a better and a more loving place. Uh, and if that's not like Jesus, then I don't know what is. Uh, someone once said it this way, if you have the power to make the world a little better, do it. The world needs more of that. So, what are you doing? What are you doing, especially in these times of COVID-19 and in the times of sort of racial tensions in our country? What are you doing to be like Christ in the world, to shine God's love and God's light uh, to the people around you? I really think we too often look up at God and we say to God, God, when are you going to do something in the world? Uh, but what I really think is that God looks down at us and wonders the same thing about us. So what stands out to you about this uh, walking on water story with Jesus and his disciples? Uh, I hope it's this. I hope it's this. While Jesus was an amazing and miraculous being sent to shine God's love and light in the world, uh, Jesus looks at you and he sees the same thing. Uh, you are an amazing and miraculous being sent to shine God's love and light in the world. I hope you can hear Jesus' voice saying to you, come, come on, I believe in you, you can do this. I pray that you can hear that. I pray you can believe that. And I pray that we all will live that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord God, when we gather for worship, uh, as Christians, we always come to worship you and to worship Christ. And so we thank you for Jesus. Uh, we thank you that he was an amazing and a miraculous being and that he shined your light and your love so brightly that we still feel it and experience it today. But Lord, help us also to recognize that when Jesus looks at us, he also sees amazing and miraculous beings and that we too are called to shine your love and your light into this world. Lord, help us to hear it. Help us to believe it. Help us to live it. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we really do believe that the Christian life, the way of Jesus, is best lived out in the context of, of a community. Uh, that's, what, that's what church is all about. It's what church community is about. And uh, if you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a church family, I really want to invite you to consider making First United Methodist Church of Baton Rouge your, your, that church family. And I know it's a little, it, a little difficult now that we're uh, separated and we're worshiping virtually. Those days uh, will pass and we'll be able to come back together at some point in time. But even so, I want you to consider making this your church home. And we have an, uh, a gathering that we call Believe and Belong. Uh, we're doing them online right now. And the upcoming dates for that are August 27th and 30th. And at those events, we talk about what it means to believe in Jesus. And we talk about what it means to be a committed part of, the, of a community of faith. And so if you're interested in becoming a member of First United Methodist Church, again, I'd love for you to consider that. We'd love to have you. Uh, you'll see the information there on your screen. And you can reach out to Karen Milioto for more information or to let us know that you're coming. And now I want to invite you to join us in this hymn, uh, and the words of this hymn are also a beautiful prayer, so I in invite you to sing them that way, Here I Am, Lord. I will go. 
Hear this final word and blessing. Jesus was an amazing and a miraculous being sent to shine God's light and love into the world. But here's what you need to know. When Jesus looks at you, he sees the exact same thing. You are an amazing and miraculous being sent to shine God's love and light into the world. Uh, I hope you can hear that. I hope you believe that. And I hope we all will live that. Go now and may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.